I were milk, and this is permanent rain press. Hey everyone, it's Chloe with the permanent rain press, and today I am so happy to be joined by Milk. How's it going, you guys? Good, hey, good, good. good. Yeah. It's such an exciting time, even though I know you really wanted to be playing shows in Ireland right about now, but I wanted to talk about your return to live music, which was December 9th in Birmingham. So tell me, were there any stage nerves? Weirdly no. enough, no, I actually think I felt like the least nervous I've ever felt for playing live. Yeah. It felt like there was, I feel like there was less pressure because like it hasn't been done in so long that like people aren't expecting as much as they usually would so you can kind of yeah. even like obviously you don't go in with the mindset of it's okay to make mistakes but i think people accept it a little bit more if things are a bit off yeah people were forgiving and supportive and i think that we all kind of knew that it would be that way even more so than normal just because as much as it's been a long time for us away from playing shows people haven't been to shows either so it's kind of a similar dynamic on both sides um so no not as nervous as normal and i think also it being at a distance from our hometown we kind of didn't really know what to expect anyway so we sort of just went out open-minded and i think yeah it went well for us in the mm -hmm. end yeah so you did have back-to-back -back shows in in london and bristol so how did the endurance and stamina hold up because you guys are saying um it's kind of a new feeling for everyone but it can't be easy like staying in performance mode after so much time away from concerts and full sets yeah it was it was tricky because we kind of didn't really stop once you know because we we had issue getting over on the boat and all this kind of thing so i think that really took its toll as well yeah and then it was um obviously it was you know great to clean all the different venues but it was kind of very much okay go from one city to the next go in there was no days off really so we just had to always be switched on so it, it does take its toll yeah, yeah. yeah. it's the first time we did that as well so it was all kind of new yeah 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 i was gonna say but you guys are are on the younger side so maybe not as difficult if you were like um a band <laughs> and you're maybe in your late 30s early 40s kind of thing but you did <laughs> i feel like no matter what age you are you you feel like you're in your late 30s on <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. like that when it gets to a certain time even now in like the 20s it might be like okay it's time for bed i'm getting tired kind of thing yeah we didn't do any late nights no we nah, didn't do well, like when when because we were we were so full on that like you don't get you don't get much time to kind of enjoy the place that you're in you kind of need to get to sleep so you can get up early and go to the next place straight away yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And it worked well. I think a lot of people enjoyed those shows. You got to meet, interact with some fans again. So what was that like? It was nice. It was, it was cool to, to see everyone after so long. It kind of, at a point, felt like, you know, I was just playing music to my laptop. Yeah. And like, people didn't really listen anymore or care that yeah. much. So it was cool to actually see people who still know the words and still listen to the music. Yeah, mm -hmm. the thing is, too, we also didn't have any real... I mean, beyond kind of streaming services and things, we had never seen like a tangible change in how our audiences would react and things. So like I was saying earlier, it was our first time in the UK and it was kind of our first, um, our first look at whether or not there would be audiences and how they would react, how they felt about the music. So it was lovely to see people so invested and so kind of involved and happy at the shows. It was really nice, yeah. That's awesome. And we're just saying your Ireland dates, unfortunately, had to be postponed once again. I feel like these have been in the works for years. So tell me about that decision. And in Ireland right now, is it very like touch and go with live music and in-person events of any kind? Yeah. yeah, so it's a real shame we had to postpone them. There will be new dates soon. It's just, you know, we're not the only people that had to postpone so they have to work out venue availability and, and all that kind of stuff. But um. Yeah, it's it's just a tricky one. We we got really badly hit with um, the new variant before Christmas, and government are you know preemptively shutting things down. And um, so at the minute, eight pm is the curfew if it's a cinema, restaurant, pub, club, gig, whatever. Eight pm curfew, and only fifty percent capacity. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there are some bigger acts um, that are able to do maybe two shows in one day, but it just doesn't make sense, you know, if like say if they're meant to do to 20,000 people they can do two 10,000 people shows but it just it, it wouldn't make sense for us in the level we're at and a lot of other acts of, like bands that we know and people we know it just it's really unfortunate but it's just kind of where we're at you know yeah. 
I do know that when you do finally get to play those shows for your for your family, friends, fans, it'll be very memorable. And if all goes to according to plan, you do have a few shows lined up in the summer opening for Orla Gartland. So fellow Dublin artists, what was it like being asked to open for her Irish tour dates? It's cool. It's one of those things where it's like before I was even in milk, before I was even really properly doing music, I was watching she used to do a uh, Oh, like YouTube videos and I used to watch them when I was in school so it's cool to kind of now be opening for her to like kind of watch her rise and then now kind of in a way be, be part of that thing that she's doing yeah I'm really looking forward to it so like they're the biggest rooms that we'll have played um and it'd be nice to do them in Ireland and you know hopefully not like I said not sure when our new dates will be but if if some people that maybe you know, want to see us, get to see us a bit beforehand. That's that's great as well. And yeah, yeah really look forward to her. Like her new album's great. So yeah, it should be sure. um yeah, really look forward to it. And hopefully people get to get um double the milk, so the opening set and then the full set when you do do your headliners. Uh to the EP was released in August. You've talked about going into the studio more prepared to like deconstruct and rearrange these songs on the EP. So looking back, what are you most proud of in that process? That's a good question. That's a great <laughs> question. God, I don't know. What do we think? Um I think for me anyway it was the kind of the idea of like a lot of those songs a lot of the ideas were stuff that some of them i would have written when i was like 16 17 maybe and i feel like a lot of the time you you attach yourself to something and kind of coming in with the attitude of just not being too proud of anything and if an idea is changing just let it change and let something go if something's not working just get rid of it and kind of accepting that, you know, just because it was one of the first things you ever wrote when you first got into music doesn't mean it has to stay that way. Yeah. And I think personally for me, the thing I would be proudest of is just being able to pull the whole thing together where there are so many little constituent parts and so many other people involved. Like there are a number of kind of steps to each song. So it did feel really good to know for sure that we had kind of closed it out and done as well as we could. Like there's a nice kind of finality in that for me that I'm proud of. It really means I can stand behind it more because I just know that we gave as much as we could and then that was the way it went, you know. Which song do you think was the most challenging as a band with respect to getting to that final version that you were happy with? Mm, not sure. What chains have loads of mixes there? Like, was there one we returned to a lot of times? I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I don't mind falling in love with you. It took a while because it's it's quite a complex one, really. And we yeah. really wanted to make sure it was expansive and kind of sounded as exciting as we wanted it to when we caught that one through. Mm, there was also a day when it might have been the day that we did our last interview. It might have been the same day. We were working on it and the uh, logic crashed <laughs> and we lost like two hours of work and we had to do it all again. Yeah. Is that like a, a band's worst nightmare when that happens? Yeah, it, it was like we just wanted to get it done again. So I think it was like it crashed. We lost two hours of work. Adam, our producer, was like talking about how he remembers most of the stuff he did and how he wanted to do it again. And I think we went like an hour or two without talking to each other just so we wouldn't distract ourselves. Like we just wanted to get it done. Yeah, we all just stayed out of one another's way for a couple of hours yeah. and we managed to get back there. But yeah, I actually had forgotten about that. That's yeah. definitely the answer. But, but even like, I don't mind falling in love with you, it is quite complex. But I remember we were like trying to get the groove for your soul and stuff. It did take a while, you know, there was no yeah, you're so, easy. Because yeah. your souls are very like, the song kind of starts at one level mm. and it just kind of stays at that level. And it was about kind of keeping that song interesting for the whole thing. It was was uh, way more difficult than I had expected it to be. <laughs> that song was actually, I wanted to talk about that one because that was my favorite song off the EP, like the way the, the sonic build and the repetitive words. And there's like this lyric in there i'm not sure if you know off the top of your head what that would be it was the world was just silence before your words decorated it like that whole line can you tell me a bit about the specific inspiration behind that track and how you kind of put it together what feelings you were thinking of in the studio 
Yeah, uh, I don't mind. It was very like uh, one of those things that I wrote it acoustically originally. Um, and the whole idea, mo most of the ideas behind a lot of those songs is long distance. And the idea behind that one is kind of the, the I don't know, risk, I suppose. You take in a long distance relationship and that idea of being like, I don't, I don't mind being long distance, but obviously phrasing it different, being like, I don't mind falling in love with you. And then asking, do you mind falling in love with me? And kind of being like, the, the whole song is basically a much more romantic way of saying, I don't mind that we live this far away from each other. I would like to be in a relationship. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it came together really well. It sounds really nice. Um, I know WhatsApp was a savior for your band early on, kept you organized. And Connor mentioned in another interview, you had one for the important things and then the other for chit chat and sending memes. So is that still the case? Like is WhatsApp still used regularly? Uh, I, I think, it's, yeah, yeah, it's kind of transitioned where we've, we've got a manager now and there's a, the group chat with a manager, which is serious. And then our... But no, it's still like it's still great. It's just a really easy way for like, you know, people like Mark or Connor's working away on something and send in demo and you know, just it's really yeah, it's just really useful. I don't know. Yeah, it helps. I, I, I know we wouldn't check our emails. <laughs> to yeah, find it's, it's just quick as well. Because like with WhatsApp, there's no like send something, download it. It's, it's literally just sends the audio file and you just have to play it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just quick and easy. Yeah. It still Maybe works and from a streaming service. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, you know, ideas don't come when you're in the same room together. So although you can meet like it could be at odd hours, who sends the most memes in the in the chat? That's actually I'd say it's probably is it you must be you there. send it off yeah, on yeah, Instagram. Instagram. Oh, you you always send, send it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. We have a group on Instagram. We have an Instagram chat yeah. and Morgan <laughs> the, the Instagram chat is like exclusively memes. Yeah. From it's, Morgan. Yeah, basically yeah. from yes. Morgan. I'll take that one. Yeah. <laughs> so because uh, Morgan sends the most memes, does he also send the worst memes? I can't they're all that. pretty all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean what's my standard? Like, There's a lot of like Morgan, super Yeah, he like he thoroughly Check. Morgan's like afraid of being reprimanded for memes. Like he'll <laughs> thoroughly check the meme. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I send more like you stupid, stupid stuff, stuff that though. happened either to me or someone I know, and some of it is probably really not yeah. funny, <laughs> but it's funny to me. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, more. Yeah, you're the meme. Thanks. I'm glad yeah. I like my memes. Thank you. <laughs> they're they're quite niche. There are a lot of like yeah. memes relating to being in a band. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Relatable, yeah, yeah, fair, fair. Uh, you collaborated with your friends in Search Party Animal once again on two. So, what's it like working with Adam not only as your producer but with him and the guys to mix your sounds and play off each other? Um, it's been really lovely. You see, for us, he's been a close friend of ours. I'm, I'm sure you were aware of this, but we all know him very well. And um, as a result, working with Search Party Animal has always just been a way to kind of allow more of his ideas to enter into our process. So it's not really as much a case of him and us. It's kind of just how much he will contribute versus us and kind of evening that out a bit more. Um, so now it's it's quite an easy process really because we've worked together so much in the past. And you could like really hear their influence. Like they have more spacey tones, the post math rock influence. So I love that, like with that song and then from one, the EP, it just sounds totally like left field from everything else on it. But I think that's great about collaborating with other artists. Like you don't want it to sound exactly like your own sound. Um, and then just with Milk Sound, you could hear the sound progression from one, the EP. So I have to ask, like, where do you go from here? What have you been working on in the back half of 2021? I, don't know, I think we all kind of want to change, change it up a bit. I think whatever the next body of work we do release will be hopefully significantly different from what we've done before i think it, you get you'll, you'll just plateau if you don't try progress anything and i think it's nice to kind of constantly keep up with what you consider to be the next sound or like the new sound mm -hmm. or like even trying to create whatever the next sound could be so i think at the moment we're just in the middle of kind of figuring out 
what we want that next body of work to be and what we want it to sound like rather than just kind of what we've done in the past, which is looking into old songs and reinventing them. I think yeah. now it's just about creating new songs completely. Yeah, I think it's also likely that we write as a group more rather than the kind of more individual processes that we had. I, I think that the way we're all here today is more likely to be the, the format in future, just to see how it changes things and how the sound is altered by that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Are there any specific like sounds or artists you've been feeling really inspired by lately? Man, I love, <laughs> I love spacey country music. <laughs> I heard someone call it boot gaze the other day. <laughs> boot gaze nice. is yeah. like that. That I think I think it's like officially called ambient Americana, but I love that stuff. Yeah. It's it's like I think Bonnie Bear kind of like the king of it, but that kind of sound is like mm. my favorite thing. We, yeah, we all like like very different things as well. You know, I think mm. there's a lot of for me. I, I found a lot of new artists this year. That I never listened to before that sound quite left field, like even say like Adobe like and people like that. Mm -hmm. That are like I've never listened to stuff like that before. There's a lot of new music, like a new style yeah. of music. I think at the minute, I don't know if that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah. No, but I, I also like we've never, we've never gone into writing anything thinking like this is fitting this thing, like this needs to be this or whatever. We we always just kind of write what we think sounds cool and what we think suits the song and what direction the song needs to go and that's just kind of where it where it ends up like even probably the best example we have is you and i would be quite r&b compared to the rest of our stuff mm -hmm. and that wasn't a case of us being like we need to write an r&b song that was just mm -hmm. kind of writing the song and we thought mm -hmm. it sounded cool so we put it out yeah now something it was uh morgan said earlier about like songwriting more as a band because i know before it was like mark and connor right that you two kind of primarily did writing or writing together so for you two is it interesting to like kind of go into a full band session and mesh those ideas together yeah i don't know i think it's 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 different where it's like even in the past if i wrote something alone or wrote it with connor we'd send it into the group chat and we still get input from yeah. everybody. So it's never been like, like it, it's, it's probably never been the case that nobody had input on a song. Like we've all yeah. always had input on every song. So mm. it's kind of just having people like physically, like tangibly in front of you yeah. is yeah. the only real difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Ever since um, you guys were a band, you've been largely independent. Uh, so have you been enjoying that creative freedom or is like a record label something that you would like to explore down the road? I mean, yeah, it's kind of obviously the landscape is always evolving and it's very different. We're, we're very lucky in that we can put out bodies of work now without like, you know, signing to a major and you know we can get that uh, music out there, which is, is huge. It's just, yeah, I think like the way we approach music if we felt like something was right we do yeah. it but we're not in a rush to do anything or you know it's just whatever feels right I think. Yeah. yeah you know is there like a hard line that you will draw like if if a label comes to you and says we're gonna run your social media and use exclamation marks is that like your face <laughs> down um no i think it's just like Obviously now with uh, with COVID and there were a lot of people getting deals and things and it's um, it's just a hard one to know because like when we're all locked up anyways, for us in Ireland, it's very different. Like we still can't gig this weekend. It's kind of the most important thing for us is get a body of work together. Mm -hmm. If people hear it and if people are interested, cool. But I think that's just the next move for us really is just get yeah. songs together. That's it. We're not, it's not in the, obviously, if there's someone who yeah. wants to give us a hundred million <laughs> yeah. to make a record class, but, but um, it's not the motive for the work really. At the moment. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. We've never put stuff out thinking like, I hope this gets yeah. us a record deal. And we've never kind of even really thought about record deals and like done anything with the, with the goal of getting a record deal out of it. We've always just kind of released music based off what we like and what we think is good in that moment and i think that's that's kind of the good side of doing it independent because sometimes you have record labels who we hear a song and they're like cool write five more and then you're <laughs> yeah. just kind of writing 
shy at that point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's important that like you're doing what you're doing because you're having fun with your friends, right? You never want it to to be more than that and have this pressure. Um, you worked with Ryan McDonough on the cover art for To The EP. Tell me how that came about and did you give him any ideas or inspiration? It was, it was originally, he, he, he's just a guy on Instagram who's just an artist and I, I just came across his page and I just reached out and asked if he'd, he'd be up for doing anything. And uh, there's one old specific piece that he had that I was very into. And we kind of, I used that as a reference for him, like something like this would be cool. And we had done some work on uh, making new pieces and everything. And then eventually I was just like, could we actually just use that old piece that you have, because I was just into it so much and I thought I wanted something like that. And then eventually I just realized I actually just wanted that piece. <laughs> yeah, it's just the kind of thing of, we just reached out and asked if we could use this piece in the end and he was cool with it. Yeah, yeah. seems nice. Yeah, it's a really cool piece of artwork and I love like the textures and the colors. Um, another thing I love was the concept of the visuals and photo shoot you did for In LA with Nicholas O'Donnell. So tell me about this idea and where did you go to shoot it? We, we shot it just in Dublin, uh, just in like uh, a more kind of rural area of Dublin, but it was, yeah, it kind of happened really quickly with Nick because yeah, we, we knew yeah. like we'd known it's a small enough scene and we'd known Nick from he, you know, he'd done a lot of live shots for people and then he'd done some more studio work. And I think he was into work with those, we were into work with him. And um, it was, yeah, and then the week previous was just spent on Facebook Marketplace buying tables. Someone still has them. I, I still have. use the apron. I use the apron. I did the tablecloths yeah. in my apartment. <laughs> I, think, I think the whole idea was we, we were on Zoom or FaceTime or something with Nicholas and it was very like, we were talking about a photo shoot and he in passing made some sort of joke being like, oh, maybe we could do like a tea party. And we were just like, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Like, we don't need to think about anything else. That is the idea. Yeah. Yeah. And we just kind of ran with that. Yeah, I loved it. It was like this kind of tea party in the sky had like a vintage appeal. Um, it was like, so I guess you guys had to haul all the tables and the the chairs up that yeah. up that little yeah. hill area. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. the one bad thing about being in the yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's having to independently carry a lot of yeah. But um, yeah, no, it was got there was a couple of moments in that shoot where we would need to we would be taking the photos and we'd be kind of focused on getting the shot, and then some really strange outside thing would happen. Like a couple of dogs ran through the shots and oh, things, yeah. or like people would be like walking or playing with their children around the set or whatever. So there was there was things like that that we had <laughs> yeah, to deal yeah. with that were a little. There was one guy that like it was obviously in he obviously does the walk whatever every week yeah, or whatever it's it is. and it's like like and that was his route and we could see him coming a mile away and he was just like walked directly yeah. through yeah, yeah, he, <laughs> he, he wasn't gonna go around he's like that was his route yeah. that was it so uh that was fun yeah they turned out great yeah it was cool i was sorry nicholas did great work yeah it's like the DIY ethos of a band, right? When you're like, you don't own the area, you can't pay for, for pay for the land, so you got to deal with this. But it, I think it's always like nice to have those experiences, right? Because it reminds you kind of where you're at and just getting to film at home. I'm sure that's a lot of fun. Uh, in December 2020, you did release a video for I Hate the Way You're Looking at Me Lately with fan submissions, which was so lovely. How special was it to watch all the videos and have it come together? Uh, it, was, it was really nice. Um, like it was at that time, I suppose we thought we were nearly at the end of all this lockdown and stuff. So it was, um, it was really nice. People responded really well to it. And even like for us, putting out that song i didn't expect the response but yeah, um yeah. it was amazing to see people from all different parts of the world um dancing having a good time that's what it's, that's what it's all about and at that time and even now still that's what we probably miss is that interaction with people so yeah. it was just lovely to see it yeah it's also nice to even get submissions <laughs> we were worried <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds like you'd be afraid like you get like two people send us yeah, yeah. yeah. You were like, okay, we're gonna have to step in ourselves or get get our friends yeah. and family. <laughs> like, can you please send me a video, kind of thing? Yeah, we just do them in costumes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, because your music is perfect for coming of age films or series, I have to ask, what is each of your favorite coming of age movie and why? 
That's a very good question. Yeah, that is a good oh, question. I just don't watch movies. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. I've, I've got it. I don't even know if it's coming of age. Yeah. But like, I know it's a bit of a meme, but I think like me and my friends from home, before memes were a thing, we just used to quote like super bad. And like, <laughs> like, fair, like, yeah, like yeah. you just used to like, and like step brothers at each other. But I don't know, coming of age. I don't know, they're not really coming of age. age. It's just that I was age. of the you age of coming of age when the film came out. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like there's those kind of obvious, really prolific ones, like the John Hughes kind yeah. of Breakfast yeah. Club type mm-hmm. that are always a big one. But I don't know. I think for me, it's not necessarily a coming of age movie, but High Fidelity was a big one for me when I was a teenager, just because it has that kind of, he speaks retrospectively about his relationships and kind of sets them to music. And I always just thought that was really cool. It's certainly not as much of a coming of age movie as the John Hughes ones in that it doesn't really center on people of the, I guess, in, you know, what would be secondary school yeah. or high school yeah. for us. But at that time, it was a significant one for me. So I used to love actually, it's, it was written by John Hughes, but it wasn't directed. I used to love Drill Bit Taylor. Oh, that nice. was such a good movie. Where like Owen Wilson is hired as a bodyguard for three students in a high school who were getting bullied. I don't know why, but whenever I was sick off school, I used to just watch that movie for some reason. Yeah. Gormy doesn't do that. <laughs> I'm trying to sing street. <laughs> <laughs> I can see a sing street bump today. Yeah. Nice. There you go. <laughs> Um, We're going with the the easy route there, right? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so now we are going to play a game. It is called Throwback Trivia. How it works is I'm going to be asking you questions that you've been asked in past interviews or related to Milk's content as a band. Basically a test of your memory and your knowledge. Uh, So it's out of 11. The only rules are no cheating. So no looking at your bandmates phones and you'll have 30 seconds or less to answer each question. Okay. Are you ready to play? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) For the last mixed tape in May, 2020, The question was, what is the last record you bought? So I will take either the artist or the album. And you're 30 seconds. And you can guess if you're not sure. (laughs) I don't even know what you did, though. Was mine 22 a million by Bonnie Brown? You get one final. You get one guess. So is that your one guess? (laughs) Honestly, it was I. It was almost two years ago. I also got down twenty-two million worth of money there. Yeah, I did not. I don't know what I bought. I don't, know what I don't even know what I bought. Not even then. I don't know even now. It's probably the same answer. Okay. Okay. What do you find answers? Okay, Morgan, go. So you said it. Million by Bonnie Bear for me. No, it was Vince Staples' Big Fish Theory. Okay. Okay, so, Mark. I would say twenty-two million by Bonnie Bear for me. It was Han, warm on a cold night. Oh, what is that? Um, okay, King. Oh, I probably said like a Kings of Leon album or something because I don't buy that many albums. But I don't. But I probably then was like, I shouldn't do that because <laughs> 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 I want to seem cool. I have no idea. Thanks. Three. Oh, I did. So you have done Oh my god. And Connor. Blink one eight two neighborhoods. Ah, wow. oh, oh, yeah. twenty eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so we're zeros on the board. We'll see if you can get the next one with Indie <laughs> Central. <laughs> Indie Central Music 2020. If you created a milk festival and could pick three headliners, who would you go for? So three art. Each of you gave three different artists, and each artist is worth a point. So, is everyone good? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say that I said Bonnie Bear, Vince Staples, and Haim. Bonnie Bear. You got one. You said Bonnie Bear, Frank Ocean, and Billie Eilish. 
Pretty old, it's very, 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 she very makes, old. Man, I'd make well, so much money if I had a festival. <laughs> oh, I'm so rich, man. I think okay, big. Morgan. I'm going to go with Bonobo, Bonnie Ver, Fontaine's DC. Oh, you got one. So I'm too invested. So well, well, Morgan got one. Yeah, we didn't miss I one. had one point. Which one was I right on? Uh, it was Bonobo, and you said Idols and the Blaze, so you got Good one. Ideas. That would be a serious <laughs> festival. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with me. Um, I'll go. I probably said in 2020. I probably said Kendrick Lamar and Kings of Leon, and maybe like oh, I don't know. I actually don't know who else I would have said. Okay, you got one. You said Kings of Leon. Vince oh, Staples and D'Angelo. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. I was on a mountain. Cool. Yeah. Uh, right, I think I'm going to say Kings Leon, 1975, and Catfish in the Bottom. Oh, oh you got two. You got oh, 1975, oh. Catfish, and Fontaine's DC. Oh, oh. There, I knew there was one of the Fontaine's in there. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so Connor is leading with two. Okay, oh. how many story highlights does Milk have? I'm just looking for the number. Uh, oh, highlight. Oh, I know. That's I know zero. this. Like- <laughs> no, I know this. <laughs> okay, does everyone have a number? Yeah, yeah and I can tell you okay. what they are. We'll start with Morgan. I am going to say there's two. And I'm going to say that one is to do with merch. Uh, that's our next question. So Ooh. we'll oh, see. We're going to You said two. Mark, yeah. how many? Four. Four. Two. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> how many did you say, Connor? Two. two. You're all wrong. It is three. <laughs> <laughs> What else is there? Okay, <laughs> and so what are they? And put it on your phone. Oh, is it? Okay. All right. Surely this is, if this isn't it, we need to start adding more highlights. <laughs> I'm going to say the first EP, the second EP, and merch. Incorrect. Okay, you got one. <laughs> it's. M- I, I'm going to say they're merch, gigs, and music. Okay, I'll take that. I'll give live. You... Maybe it's live, but it's something like that. Right. Was this... Okay, how about Connor? Oh, <laughs> Was it too? Music, I'll... like, shows merch? Did... Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll give that to you. And Morgan, what was on your phone? Uh, let me see what I had put down. Uh, I had said there would be one for tour, one for merch, and one for hate the way you're looking at me, the submissions. But I now know that that's what happened. Okay, well, you have two. So, yeah, it was music, tour, and merch was the three that you have. Okay. <laughs> In your photo shoot with Nicholas O'Donnell, with the four of you sitting at the table, there was a small blue suitcase. How many stickers or patches were on it? So I'm just looking for a number. What are you saying? Nicholas said he was going to take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Here we are. Um, there's a bunch of you. Right, I'm going to say... Uh, there's only two. I'm going to say eight. <laughs> I'm going to say seven. Oh, which way? <laughs> I'm going for three. Yeah, I'm going for four. Incorrect. All wrong. You were close, though, Morgan. It was five. There were five different stickers or patches. There's actually a few, like, Canada ones. Yeah. Um, USA yeah. flag. Where are those from? Yeah, Canada. Where did we get, where, where did we get that? Where's I don't ours? know. Yeah, that's just, he was meant to Photoshop them out. It was just showed up with that. And... And he was like, I'll Photoshop, oh, I'll Photoshop all the stickers off, like the flags. And we were like, cool. He just, he just never did. Like, no. <laughs> so, wait, like legitimately? So you didn't actually see them yeah. on the suitcase? Well, okay. Yeah. We yeah. saw them on, but like, say when he, he was like, oh yeah, I'll Photoshop that stuff out when I'm in them. And then never did. Like, it, it yeah. looked fine, but I remember. Now let me text him. I lost the quiz. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so there's one final question. It's worth two points. Um, Connor is in the lead with five. King has four, Morgan has three, and Mark has two right now. So yeah. see if anyone can make up ground. You've been on the cover of two different Spotify playlists. What were they named? I think I might have this no, one. No. You know. Let's go. I think I've got this one. I don't need Let's it. Go. I don't need it. All right. Everyone all right? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say the first one, not necessarily in chronological order. Number one was Peach. Uh, and number two was oh, yeah. An Alternative Era. Oh. Yes. Those ones are right. So, Mark, what did you say? Okay, I on. said Breath of Fresh Same. Air. And then for the second one, I just said Indie something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, those are like technically you were on a bunch of others, but not the covers. So you oh. unfortunately get zero for that. Uh, I'm gonna King. Take my playlist called Indie Something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I doubled down on the Irish front and I forgot about Peach. I said a fresh, fresh air and an alternative air. So I got one. Okay, yeah. <sighs> and <laughs> Connor? I said Breath of Fresh Air and Soda. So it's pretty uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we have a tie for actually three of you have, have five and Mark has two. So <laughs> congratulations, you get a round of applause. Uh, ne <laughs> next time when we play this game, um, you have to brush up on the, the band yeah. knowledge. Learn more about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, collectively as a band, we have a wild card question to end things off. Can you name all the members of the Fellowship of the Ring? Jesus Christ. What's the Fellowship of the Ring? Uh, Frodo. Frodo, Sam. Mm -hmm. You can, you might as well Frodo. ask that guitar that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have never seen any of those movies. I haven't watched Frodo, Sam, Bilbo. Bilbo. Yeah, Bilbo. 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 And now there's the young, the, the, the full of Irish chap. Yeah. Ah, uh, Legolas. Legolas. What's the tiny fella? <laughs> the beardy. Shmomeni. Uh, <laughs> beardy <laughs> chap. <laughs> Legolas and... Dobby. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> you win the quiz if you get this. <laughs> Man. He's Legolas, Sam, is Frodo, he? Sam. Mm. Bilbo. Why do I got bad names? Then it's just Sam. <laughs> Sam White. Sam White. So, uh, so there's what? There's six. We have four right now. Uh, is Aragon in there? Yeah. Aragon. Five. It's the little chap. It's the beardy chap. What's his name, man? <laughs> I don't know. I'm out. I've, I've had my phone. I'm out. I have never known. I'm just glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get. His okay, name. We'll, we'll call it out. You got four out of nine. You got <laughs> Legolas, Frodo, Six. Sam, Aragorn. Bilbo is not part of the fellowship. Oh wait! <laughs> is I it said. safe to say you guys have not seen these movies? At least I in. Know, in I think the last time I watched one of those movies, I was probably like ten. Yeah, same. you can safely say that I've never seen those movies. Uh, yeah, I don't have <laughs> twenty six hours to commit to four movies. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure they're lovely. Mm -hmm. no, Same thing know. with all of you. You're like, I can't sit through them. No, no I, they, I I just remember I was into the first three and then they had the PlayStation 2 games and they were, that was like peak PlayStation 2. <laughs> but all those, like The Hobbit and all that, I've seen none of that. No, mm. no interest. <laughs> so you, your character knowledge is only from the games. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. I, I just thought I just thought Legolas was very cool, and that's <laughs> that's my memory of, yeah. of Lord of the Rings. He has beautiful hair. Orlando Bloom. Yeah, I remember. He does he have the best stunts in the movies as well. Yeah. I, just, yeah. I remember he runs up an elephant or something, and that's that's the best part of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hands down. Yeah. So for 2022, what can fans expect for from you guys? Uh, new music, yeah. new music um, that will hopefully be not a wildly different, but a, a newer sound to people, uh, and and hopefully they're all 
into it as well. Hopefully, we don't lose a lot of fans because <laughs> we change everything. Yeah, um, and then hopefully shows, and live shows, yeah, yeah. as yeah. many shows as we can play. Really, yeah. Yeah, since we've been away for so long, yeah, um, it's hard to say, obviously, because the landscape's still a little weird over here, but. Certainly, as many as we're able to do, um, we would all love to get back to playing live regularly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, a lot to look forward to. Not sure if they'll they'll dig any new kind of country route you guys will be going, but you might be surprising. Yes. Our future folk is going to be a great success. Just blue gauge. Yeah, blue gauge music. Yeah. You heard it here first, everyone. Uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Thank nice you. one. Thank Cheers. you. Thanks, Renny. To the EP is out now. Make sure you stream it, purchase, tell all your friends. Lots more coming from Milk this year, and we will see you next time. Nice. See you. See you.